Hello, and welcome to another episode of Boundless Body Radio. I'm your host, Casey Ruff, and today we have another amazing guest to introduce to you now. Charles Maddox is an author, actor, producer, director, and health advocate. His work has been showcased with the appearances on CNN, The Today Show, Dr. Oz, Fox News, Good Morning America, The Talk, The Martha, Martha Stewart Show, and numerous other media outlets worldwide. A desire to create meals that were tasty, nutritious, and affordable also led his, to his career as the poor chef, which gave him the opportunity to share what he had learned about feeding a family for less money. After a personal health crisis struck him, he changed his focus to be a voice and a force for serious change in the health industry. The Diabetic You documentary, website, and movement came out of that determination to educate and inspire people around the world about controlling their type 2 diabetes. He is the creator of the reality TV series, Reversed, a documentary about stopping the destruction of uncontrolled diabetes. Reversed takes us into the lives of several people living with diabetes and tells some of their stories of healing and progress. Charles Maddox, what an absolute honor it is to welcome you here to Boundless Body Radio. Thanks so much for having me, brother. I appreciate it. It's such an honor. I really love your documentary, and I definitely want to deep dive into that process and why you decided to do that. Um, yes. Before we go into that, though, I have mm -hmm. to say, like, most of us have some pretty cool, like, family ties, and you have the coolest family tie of anybody I know. Can you tell us a little bit about where you come from and, and who is in your family? Well, I'm sure you're talking about uh, my uncle being Bob Marley. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, you know, it's interesting. I didn't really know. Obviously, I was I was young, so I didn't know the real impact until, you know, I actually attended his funeral. And, uh, you know, you had the whole island of Jamaica out for that. And I actually remember being in the studio at his house, which was, you know, the, 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 the now museum and stuff like that. But um and I was, I remember being in, in, in the studio and it was just like a red room and uh, had the red recording light on. And I, and, and I kind of felt this presence, you know, in a sense where it was like um, something was kind of, you know, pushing me to, to, to go in a, in a direction. And, and I really didn't know what direction I wanted to be in, but I just knew that I had this blood that was running through me and um, wanted to do something special. But so that's my mother's brother. Um, and, uh, you know, it, it, it is a blessing in a sense that he did inspire me to, uh, to, to, to do something special for other people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's really amazing. So with, with Bob Marley and his life, what, what things have you taken from the way he lived his life to try to apply in your own? The humility. And I think a lot of people try to take things from Bob Marley and, and it could be their singing. It could be the songs. But I, I don't think that's the core of what he is. It, 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 the humility made the songs. The humbleness made uh, 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 the, the magical words come off the paper. Um, that's really what, what should be taken from, from Bob Marley is, is that. And um, without that, you, know, you have nothing because it was his sacrifice of wanting to give, wanting to help others, wanting to serve. I remember he said a quote, he said, if this life is just for me, I don't want it. And I, I feel the same. So um, I think that's the greatest gift that anybody could take from him is, is where he came from, uh, very humble, humble poverty beginnings and, you know, put his life out on the, on the limb for other people. Yeah, that's really amazing. What a cool thing to be able to say that you grew up around that influence and you could really feel that presence of the places that he had been. That's really yeah. special. So yeah. that that was kind of an inspiration for you to get into show business. Is that correct? You wanted to go out and, and do some acting and do some music? I, 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 uh, I yeah, I wanted to do music and um, I, I wanted to do something. And obviously music at that point, and it was rap music at that point was probably the easiest thing. And because of, you know, the time and generation and what, you know, what was around me, um, I didn't know how to start a band. So it was, it was, I had to, to get in there and, and knock out uh, some, some, some music. And, uh, and yeah, that went pretty well. I, I used to, you know, ended up stalking LL Cool J's. Uh, he, he didn't, he lived probably like, 45 minutes from me. So I bought a car because I was working at a little deli, you know, and uh, like a stock boy slash in Long Island, you're doing everything. You're stock boy making sandwiches, 
uh, mopping the floor, everything. Um, and I bought a car and I was able to, at that point, go and find him and ended up becoming good friends. I just locked on his, on his grandmother's door because that's who he was living with per se um, back then. And he was like, yo, come in, you know, and, and we just became friends and ended up making music together. So it started off in music. Um, because that was the most accessible thing to me and then kind of progressed into to other things. Yeah, that's so interesting. And I mean, say what you will about Will Smith and, the, you know, his recent controversy, but listening to his autobiography that he put out, I believe it was last year, 2021, um, yeah. called Will, which was all about his him growing up in Philadelphia and like getting into the rap game at the very, very beginning. Such yeah. an interesting story. And a lot of the music was coming out of New York. Yeah, yeah, it was, I, I got to be honest, it was a beautiful time. I mean, this is when, you know, I, I knew Puffy before he was Puffy. Um, everybody, I remember going into, you know, uh, um, um, uh, where Puffy worked initially was, um, I can't remember the name, that's where Andre Harrell was. And I remember going in front of Andre Harrell, bringing my music and, and you know, uh, getting turned down, you know, Um <laughs> And, and that whole hustle, it was, it, was, it was brand new, it was fresh, it was exciting, it was, the city was alive, and, uh, and the culture was just off the chains. So, uh, yeah, we, yeah, we came from that same, same, type of, same type of Will Smith era, you know? Wow. Like recording rap songs on shows on the street using the boom box that probably weighed 100 pounds <laughs> up and no, overhead no, to be able to record. That, no, that's a little before my time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. great. So yeah. cool. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. So as you were growing up, would you have considered yourself a healthy person? Um, yeah, I was. I was. I was really into sports. So I was big into football. I mean, if I didn't do music in my mind, I was gonna be I was gonna be in the NFL. I was gonna be, you know, either a wide receiver, quarterback, something. You know what I'm saying? I was really into into sports. I saw uh, those videos, dude. You were fast. Yeah, no, I was fast. <laughs> I was fast. I was fast. <laughs> that probably would have been my thing. So I was healthy. But, you know, healthy is relevant to what you look at it today. You know, it, I remember going to the studio and um, in, in the Bronx, and um, which was a long journey for me. And, and at first, initially a dangerous journey because I grew up in the suburbs. And we would we found a producer and would have to go all the way to the Bronx, which was like, you know, it, it was a rough area. And uh, I remember the, the producer, he didn't charge us, but we had to bring him uh, a great Puerto Rican guy, Danny Dan the Beat Man. He's produced everybody from Bismarcky to you name it. And the only thing he asked was to bring him a, a two liter and a pizza pie. And I just remember going to that that pizza place and 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 Kate ordering a, a a couple of slices and just filling it with salt. And see, but back then you didn't know any any difference. You didn't think of I didn't I've never thought when I was young of salt or sugar or anything that you, you don't even you don't get taught that you don't hear about it. Um, so was I healthy? Yeah, I was healthy because I moved a lot and I exercised a lot, but not so much per se because I was I was eating right. You know, I wasn't eating horrible, but, you know, I wasn't uh, cognizant of what I was eating, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of us can look back on those days when we were completely unaware of what we were eating. And now it looks like a horror show. But back then, you know, especially <laughs> in the low fat days, you're just doing what yeah. you think is healthy. And as long as stuff doesn't have fat, you can have all yeah. the peanut butter jelly sandwiches and red vines and, you know, Kool-Aid exactly. that you want because none of it had any fat. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. No, so right. interesting. So your career continued to progress. Um, but I want to skip kind of ahead to the day that you were diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. Can you tell us what that was like? Oh, man, that was scary. Um, I, I, I literally was just using the bathroom a little bit too much one day. And it was over a weekend and I was at a friend's house. And um, and it wasn't anything that, I mean, was it was it abnormal? Was it, I don't remember. It was just something that I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the little clinic, Saturday clinic, paid a little hundred dollars. And, 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 you know, like most things you walk in, you get a, some antibiotics and you go about your business, you know? Um, it's not like, I, I don't think I was having, you know, uh, sex or anything like that with anybody. So I wasn't worried about that, 
but uh, maybe I thought I had some kind of urinary infection or something, whatever it might have been. And um, he came back and said, uh, do you have a family history of diabetes? I'm like, diabetes? The heck are you talking about? You know, and then he said, well, I can, I can give you some medication. And I was like, medication? You know, whoa, whoa, <laughs> how did we get to this point? You know, so I, I at that point said, no, no, I don't, I don't want any medication. I, I, I'm, I, I don't, I, I, that's one thing I did. I, you know, and I walked out and I literally got in the car, uh, my friend's car and I, I was, I didn't even tell him. I, I was, uh, I, I didn't even tell him. I was so scared to death. Um, I didn't even bother saying it. I went home, got on the internet, started looking up everything I could on diabetes. And, and I was like, yo, what is going on here? Um, and, and I look at it as a blessing because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here right now. Me and you wouldn't even be talking to be honest yeah. with you, because when I was in California, I was doing TV shows. So I was starring in movies and I, you know, I, I was, I was, I had a hot hand back then. So I know I would have been on a couple of big shows and more living for myself than living for other people. So, um, that's kind of what, what started me on this journey. Cause I felt like, I wanted to kind of chronicle my story and kind of help other people who might be in my situation. And that led me to creating the documentary. It led me to creating the television shows. It led me to working with all of these big companies and, and doing all the advocacy, advocacy work that I have up until now. But yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be diagnosed with anything, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's definitely a shock and a wake up call. Yeah, sure. And it's amazing to look back on some of those really dark times and know that those dark times were the ones that led us to the path that we need to be on. You know, it's yeah. the job lost. It's the, you know, family member who passes. It's, it's all those really heavy things that happen that set you on a new course that, that then you get to, you know, better appreciate what your calling of life is here on, on, you know, on the world. I would want to ask you, it, it sounds like you already knew that diabetes was very, very serious. Had you, had you been around other people that had diabetes? I, I know it, it kind of ran in the family, didn't it? No, to be honest. No. I mean, my aunt had it, but I never, I, I never even paid, you know, I mean, I would, I, I would go by, I would see her all the time. And, and I, I never, it never equated to me what diabetes, honestly, really, I, I got to be honest, it never equated what diabetes was. So even though she was, I think she was actually on dialysis at that point, but it still never registered diabetes and food and it, nothing ever made me think that you know, this came from anything. So, um, no, I didn't, I didn't know anybody who had diabetes, to be honest. Interesting. Um, yeah. So it was, it was definitely a shock. Wow. Uh, it, it's so, it's really interesting to me having, you know, been in the health world for a while and you've been educating people for a while. And there's a reason you're out educating people about diabetes because there's such a lack of education around diabetes. And it's, it's interesting, even medical professionals, I would say people that have been diagnosed with type two diabetes, I find it very interesting that most people can hardly even explain what it is or what the process is. Is that something that you found as well? Yeah, yeah, you know, and I say that because if, if somebody told you you had, you know, uh, pancreatic cancer, you, you'd go and study. You'd go and figure out what pancreatic cancer is. You'd go and try to figure out what, what, what cures, what, what, what treatment. You, you would do the research. But like with my situation, when the doctor came in and he said, I can give you some medication. Now, this doctor is not even my doctor. He doesn't know my history. I mean, how did I get here? It had to be something that led up to this. I mean, this guy didn't say, hey, you know what? You know, you got some high numbers right here. What, what have you been doing? Did you eat before you came here? Because this wasn't based on a blood test. This was based on a finger prick. So, you know, did you eat before you came here? Did, uh, you know, what, what's, what's your history like over the last 12 months before I prescribe you something? So when somebody gets prescribed something, they just figured, I'm just going to take it. And, and this is going to help me or in, in keeping down those, those numbers. Um, so they don't take that, they don't take that same active presence to, 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 to make the change. So, um, so yeah, so I think that there's a lack of education and a lack of information because the first line of defense is just hey, take this pill. 
And, and usually yeah, that's yeah. not the first pill. That's probably the second or the third pill. You know, maybe they have high blood pressure, maybe they have cholesterol, you know, other things like that. So by the time they get that pill, that's just one more. Yeah, that's a really good point. And each one of those could have potential side effects that would require even more pills on top of it. We do yeah. know now, uh, and you learned apparently that lifestyle can be amazing for type 2 diabetes. So initially early on, as you were doing some of those internet searches, what things were you learning about lifestyle that, that you were able to then implement um, in your own personal life? Um, so one thing I did right away is I used to go to the gym all the time and I was like, you know, lifting these weights and, you know, all of this. And that's, I stopped that totally. And cause I wasn't doing any cardio. So I said, you know what, man, I'm stopping hitting the weights cause that's bulking me up and making me more thick and I want to slim down. So I said, I'm just going to do cardio. So I literally just started walking every day for like an two hours and then I started picking that up into jogging but then also I had to fix my diet but I didn't know what to what to eat and even online it was very confusing so um what I did was I kind of said you know what I'm going to do God's diet and I figured you know what hey if I eat you know chicken and fish and lean meat and 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 some vegetables and some fruit and drink a lot of water you can't go wrong with that you know, I don't care, you know, I mean, there's different lifestyles and things like that, but at the end of the day, having a little bit of lean meat, some fish and chicken, whatever like that, and some vegetables and, and some fruit and drink water, you're going to have a, you're going to have a pretty, pretty all right lifestyle. Um, so that's what I did. And literally within, I would say almost like four weeks, I probably lost 25 pounds. I just, it wow. just shred right off of me. Um, and, uh, so that's, that's really what I did. And, uh, you know, it, it's an, it's a never ending process, you know, cause there's levels of health, um, and levels of healthy. And, um, while somebody might think that they're healthy right now, you know, there's somebody over here, like, listen, man, I'm, I'm eating, you know, twigs and berries, you know, and, uh, you know, this is really healthy, you know, so, um, there's levels of health, you know, some people consider, you know, uh, a salad with, you know, a ton of salad dressing on it, you know, a great thing. Cause they're like, man, I had a salad today. Um, and, you know, and then fried chicken for dinner, you know? So, I mean, it, it's, it's, there's levels of healthy, you know? Yeah, totally. I think for a lot of people, just even making any meal at home can be a step in the right direction. There's so many people that are eating out like every yeah. meal, like make the worst possible meal, but making yourself at home could be a positive step in the right direction for a lot of people. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, so, so with your story, as you're starting to improve your health and, you know, given what you've done in your career, when does it start to occur to you that you have a pretty unique ability to, to be a great storyteller and, and when did you decide to start creating some media around this story? Well, I, when I moved from Los Angeles to, yeah, to Florida, um, my, my son came up with an idea of this whole healthy meal thing. You know, he was like, wouldn't it be cool to have real people making, you know, healthy meals? And at that point, there wasn't a lot of diversity on TV um, with the cooking shows. It was Iron Chef and, and stuff like that. So I said, wow, that would be a good idea, you know? So I said, um, and I came up with a name for it. And then I just literally called the local, I think it was a CBS, ABC affiliate and got the, the, the program director, general manager on the phone. He told me to come on in and, and uh, here I'm pitching, you know, this concept and he loved it. And he, he wanted to put it on TV, but the elections were, were around the corner. So he was like, all right, Charles, let's just get past the election. And for me, that kind of was like, man, that's a, that's a, yeah, I, I don't want to wait four or five weeks. So I called the, the, the NBC affiliate and they were like, yeah, we, we'd love to have you on. So it just worked out and they had a, a morning show uh, with Lindsay, who used to star in the real world. She was the host and um, uh, they, they gave me a w every week slot. So I started doing that and that kind of translated into this whole, you know, healthy, affordable, and, and that kind of snowballed into, you know, all these other talk shows, and then, you know, deals with, you know, a lot of cooking companies, and, and, and then a cookbook and stuff. I was just working it, you know what I mean? I was just, you know, having fun with it and just working it, but I knew there wasn't many people doing what I did that looked like me, so I figured that, you know, it would, you know, it would, it would kind of take off, and it, and it, and it did, so.
Yeah, that's great. Way to use your talents in a specific way that was really needed for and, and appreciated for a lot of people. I really love that. Yeah. When when did the idea of reverse start to come to you? Yeah, I was, I was, wow, that's a good one. Um I I I was I had created um I was in the parking lot of a Walmart and I saw the big red bus that goes around and collects blood. And I saw, I thought, well, wow, why did, why isn't there one like this for diabetes? So long story short, I contacted a pharmaceutical, a biopharmaceutical company that I had worked with in the past. And I said, I got an idea. I want to create this bus that goes around and educates people on diabetes. And they loved it. So they ended up calling uh, Edelman, this big uh, um, uh, marketing company around one of the biggest in the world uh, that, that never wanted to work with me until uh, the pharmaceutical company call, talk, called them. And now all, of sudden, buddy, now all of a sudden we're buddy, buddy, right? We're sitting in the oh, office. Of course. They're flying me in first class and putting me up in nice hotels in Manhattan. And now I'm in the office, right? Um, but I couldn't get, I couldn't get arrested before. So, um, <laughs> so they ended up doing this, this, this um, uh, thing with, uh, with, with, with Shire. Um, and, and the company and, and I came back and did another one because um, I said, hey, listen, I can save, you know, you guys spending a ton of money, man, you know, uh, we can do this and I can do it myself and uh, market it and promote it. But while I was on the road, I'm like, while I'm reaching people, I wasn't really reaching people. So even though I was doing TV every morning, I'm like, man, there are millions of people I'm not reaching. So I said, well, how can I reach those people? So I just came up, I said, well, wouldn't it be cool to, to bring all of these modalities, all these experts, put them in one place, bring in these, ex, these, these guests who wanted to lose weight, who wanted to change their, their diabetes. And we created this television series called, called uh, Reverse. So I did that, invested my own money, shot it in Orlando, rented out a nice house and put it together. And um, it kind of sat for a little while because I really didn't know what to do with it after that. And then um, I bumped into uh, a guy named Chad who did distribution. And uh, he was like, hey, you know what? I'm gonna, I can take this out to some of the networks. And it usually takes about you know, a couple months to get back, so on and so forth. Um, and if, if they even get back, you know I mean? And literally less than a week later, he called and said, hey, Discovery wants this piece. Uh, they want to, they want to, they would love to air it. And now, but at that point, Casey, because I'm like, okay, great. I, I was so excited. I'm like, man, we got a network that wants this. Now, how do we fund it? <laughs> so <laughs> that was the crazy part because I literally locked myself away in a room for like a month, literally calling everybody and their mother who you would think would be interested in this, you know, from device companies to pharmaceutical companies to Johnson and Johnson to, to every company that was in diabetes, and literally nobody was biting. I mean, they might have thought it was cute or whatever like that, but they didn't see the benefit in it. And then one day, I, literally toward that to, toward the end, when I really was like, this is not going to happen. Um, another company, a, a lady connected me to a guy. He was like, he's a CEO of, of, of Mankind, which makes uh, 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 the Afreza, the inhaled insulin. And uh, he bought into it. And that's how we were able to, to create Reverse, which uh, we shot in Jamaica and is a beautiful piece. And um, yeah, it, it's changed lives, you know. Was it stunning to you to not get the help from the places where you thought you would get help? It's still stunning. It's still stunning because remember, I'm still doing the same thing. And you know, you you look at this and you're like, listen, we just want to, you know, put put a message out. You know, we just want to put something out that that represents, you know, the people and get some stuff out that that can change lives. And um, you know, you knock on doors and you know that these companies are spending tens of millions of dollars and throwing them away. Trust me, I deal with these companies now, and it's like brother, what, what they will spend, you know, $5 million on will blow you away. Because remember, they have big budgets. They, you know, uh, uh, some companies, and, and, and especially you know, a couple of years ago, not that far, maybe, you know, three, four years ago, but some of their budgets, $150 million for one to market one drug. So, you know, asking somebody for $5 million for a series, 
you would think is nothing. Asking them for $500,000, you would think it's nothing. But you, you would be very surprised that they will waste tens of thousands of dollars on something that makes no sense. And then if you finally get a chance to get to somebody who you could ask for for $500 to do something to support uh, some uh, yeah, little uh, weekend education class, they'll tell you they don't have it. Yeah. I'm, I'm dead honest. They'll say, no, it's not in the budget. Wow. And, but yet, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm going through something now where the pharmaceutical company is, 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 you know, it, it, it is spending hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to keep us from getting what they owe us. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, dude, you, you're going to spend real soon what you owe us. <laughs> they just giving us the money and saying, hey, listen, you screwed us. You know, you, what you did, you screwed us, you know? And, and instead of just giving us that money and saying, hey, let's wash our hands, you're going to end up spending that money and may, may lose and, and have to pay double. You know, it, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Wow. wow. I hope that the regular listeners of the show by now would not be super surprised by that. Understanding that the medical system is not necessarily there to make people better per se. It's more to kind of manage disease over a long period of time. And it is a business. But I think a lot of people out there this would be a complete shock. Like I thought these medications were going to improve my life. So I thought my, my doctors and the medical system was there to improve my life and get me away from this kind of stuff. And it's just, it's not how the system works. It's no, it's not the fault of any individual doctor. It's just, that's, that's, we're in a capitalist society and that's how it is. It, it, exactly. And it, yeah, it's a business, but, and it also, you know, it, it's, you know, the, nobody's getting incentive to try to help people. Right. I mean, and, and the people that work, let's just say in these companies, let's say pharmaceutical companies, this is a job to them. This is just a job. You're not going to find somebody, you know, who's a, a marketing manager of the Atlanta region who knows who's in the diet, who's in uh, diabetes or HIV, who knows everything about HIV, because you know what? The turnover rate is also very high. You know, these people jump from company to company. So I've been on, I've been on with them and, 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 some of them who are in this diabetes space couldn't tell you the first thing about diabetes because it's not their job to know about diabetes. It's their job to do this, this, and this. If it's marketing, if it's if it's management, if it's whatever, it's not their job to do to do that. I mean, I've been on the road where I've been invited from like with, you know, and I don't care about saying names, but like AstraZeneca, and they would fly me into Washington, D.C., and they would have this, this, you know, where they brought in 20 other people and they're spending, I'm sure, at least a million dollars, right? They flew in people from uh, uh, from the UK to film and all this kind of stuff like that. And it was to try to figure out how to reach people with type two diabetes. And I would say to them, dude, I've got a television show that we could reach people with type two diabetes. Why don't you guys help me get this thing? Brother, it was like speaking Chinese. And I'm like, I'm, I'm lost with this. I mean, this show helps people and educates people on diabetes. It's not about getting, it's not, I, we don't even need to slant it as getting people off of medication. It's just, how can we educate people or inspire people or even test people? You know, we could make this message, whatever you want to do, if you give me a check. Um, and it, it was it literally, it went through one ear out to the other and, and, I was just blown away that they didn't, they couldn't see what I wanted to, what I was doing and also wanted to continue to do. So, you know, the people that work in these companies, they're just doing the job. They've got, I hate to say it, they've got bills and a family to take care of. And they're not trying to disrupt the system that's already a big system. And um, it really is what it is. I mean, that's why, you know, when I put these shows together, I kind of tell these doctors and these, these people, these companies, I say, listen, you know, we got to, you know, if you look at rappers and sports figures and singers and stuff like that, they, they can come together and be one voice. I said, people in, in, in healthcare, they're splintered. You know, this doctor's doing that. They may have a big following. This one over here, this organization doing that, 
this one's over there. They, 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 they're one of the only uh, groups that haven't come together and brought some of the biggest minds together to, 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 to figure out something. So when I do these things and I'm bringing these people together, it's like, dude, I just brought the biggest face in intermittent fasting together. I just brought the biggest face in, in, in keto. I just brought the biggest face in carnivore. I just brought the biggest, one of the biggest faces in, in, in exercise or in yoga, whatever it might be. And you just pulled together a masterclass team of experts that could now work together and get a message out. And it, it's still hard getting the funding because now you have to reach out to these companies and try to get the right person on the phone to understand, you know, uh, how this is, 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 is a benefit. So it, it's, yeah. it's, it's a nonstop thing, you know? Mm, yeah, that's so interesting. And that's a really great segue to my next question. So season one wraps, um, yeah. you put it out there. What are some things that, that went really well and what are some things you wanted to improve on in season number two, um, season number one, I was I was I was very uneducated about um, health per se. So I knew that I knew the basics, and um, but I didn't have per se a, a great plan. It wasn't a lifestyle. It was more, you know, low carb, low, low this, you know, no sugar, so on and so forth, and it worked. It worked. It was more about um, taking uh, responsibility and also about uh, eating right and things like that and cutting out certain things. So it actually did work. But I look at now season two, where we actually use ketogenic and intermittent fasting, which I've educated and, and, and grown um, in, in, in how I see health and understand health and used some really great experts to help educate not only myself, but others. So it, literally it's, it's graduating from, you know, from elementary school to, to high school. And now, you know, we're working on another series that we plan on shooting in Costa Rica called uh, Same Reverse, but we're using carnivore. And, you know, kind of, that's kind of like going from high school to college in a sense, because um, it does have a lot of benefits. You'd be very surprised in, in the benefits. Um, so, so yeah, what I would, what I would say is that always, you know, um, the, the shows were, the shows were, are all look really great, even though, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, it was one of those things where it was like, I just put it together in my mind and kind of, you know, I, I, I'm actually, I'm actually shocked that I was able to pull this and put this together because I literally would write out the show a few days before we got to set, it would literally just hit me. And I'd be like, all right, this scene is going to be this, 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 this. And I've never done this before. So it was kind of, you know, overwhelming in a sense. Um, I would say the marketing is always the, the issue because we're not on, you know, NBC or CBS or something like that, you know, and it does take big dollars to, to, to get this where it needs to be. Um, the marketing is always, and the PR is always an issue. And, and to be honest with you, the PR game is horrendous. I mean, finding a good person that actually is not going to take you for some money and is actually going to connect you to, you know, good outlets and stuff like that is slim to none, especially now in this day and age. Before, not to get off track, but before social media or around social media to start and stuff like that, PR people could ask whatever they want to. Um, they could ask for 50, 60, $100,000 a month. But now because of, of social media and you have someone like Kanye that could post something and get you know 5 million likes, um, they don't really need the same type of PR. So in a sense that has lagged because now you have just some stragglers who are just taking money and kind of doing the, the the simple stuff. So really, PR and marketing, getting the word out there, I would say, is my one of my one of my um, biggest issues um, as far as really the reach. So what I do, and not to keep running on, is try to keep the topic in a group that has a good following. So like Carnivore has a big following, so the show will reach a lot of people because it's based on that particular topic, keto has a big following. Diabetes doesn't have a big following. You understand what I'm saying? That's the sad part. 
like 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 specific things have bigger followings than diabetes itself. Um, yeah. so I have to create these shows that have a focus around ketogenic, intermittent fasting, carnivore, things of that nature to make that attractive to diabetes. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. I've noticed the same thing since I took my nutrition coaching practice from, you know, the standard what I was taught to tell people about nutrition, which would never work, to doing a little bit of the opposite and finding low carb keto carnivore and all of a sudden it's working for everybody. Once you yeah. get into that world, it's so amazing when you start seeing the results and you're just starving for any kind of content. And what can I learn about this? Who's written books about this? Who does yeah. podcasts? Who does articles? all of this stuff and so so you know once you get in it you're really looking for those things i think that's a really smart way to market you mentioned the team that you brought down with you dr ken berry uh dr donald vega i met both of those guys at keto salt lake this year those guys yeah. are awesome maria yeah. emmerich is yeah. amazing uh yeah. you had um chris and miriam blair they live in my yeah. backyard a few miles away here with keto chow like you yeah. got a really cool team to go down with you to help work with these people. Why was it so important? Jason Fung was in it. Like, why was it so important to make sure that you had the best experts to work with these people? Well, once again, credibility, you know, um, if, if you didn't have the names attached, then what would you really have? You know what I'm saying? So I had to be able to, to bring the names and, uh, you know, and, and what's interesting with that, it was really powerful. Um, everybody was, actually this was in the middle of covid this was covid had just i mean we were probably what, maybe five six months into covid or seven months into oh COVID. wow wow and uh you know everybody was like yo we're, we're there and uh it i was actually more i don't know if they were scared but i know i was more nervous because the thing back then is if if you would have gotten covid during this this was a whole process now, Casey, this wasn't, this wasn't, you know, you got COVID, you, you're stuck somewhere in a house for 14 days and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, if we would have had, you know, three people get COVID or four people get COVID, man, I don't, I don't even know what we would have done because we didn't have a budget to make sure everybody had to be there for 14 extra days and, and this, that, and the other thing. So, but, yeah, everybody came through and, and, um, and it was, it was, it was a one big family. It literally became this one beautiful big family. And, you know, those same people are, are excited to get back and, and do another season. And what it meant also for me was that I was creating something that they could share their passion. And, you know, I mean, Ken already gets big views, but this is a different type of way that you see Ken, you know, and, um, and uh, they were all troopers, you know, nobody acts or anything, everybody drama free, one big family of just entered education and, and a little bit of entertainment, you know, which came from just real life and the, and the guests being amazing people. Yeah, that's great. Maybe you could talk a little bit about the guests who came on the trip. I, it was I thought this was an interesting move. You actually included, I believe, at least one or two people from season one on season two to come back. So wasn't it an even mix between new people and, and returning guests? It, it was. You know why? Because Lisa, it, you saw her story. She has uh, initially on season one, her husband, who was a great guy, he, it, he wasn't the biggest, um, uh, I wouldn't say supporter, but she she kind of slipped she kind of slipped um especially after he passed he passed away from diabetes complication so i, I saw that she slipped and she's a friend of mine she's a sweet lady so i said you know what i want to get her back over here and get her back on track uh, same with jerome jerome had done tremendous and you know life happens you know and 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 he kind of slipped and gained the weight back and stuff like that so I said, you know what, I want to get him back here and, and try to help him. And and because that's also powerful, right, to, to show that we all slip and that we can fall off the wagon. But, you know, we're going to get right back on it um, with this new information. So and then, you know, we found some other folks and then, you know, I wanted to bring a, a, a someone in that was. Uh, you know, a, a caregiver per se, you know, Lisa's daughter, or, you know, someone of a family member that, you know, could be a support system, because having a support system is actually very key, 
you know, if, if, if I'm trying to eat really healthy and I come home and my girlfriend or my wife or whatever is, is, is making, you know, French fries and, 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 uh, you know, chocolate chip cookies, um, you know, it's going to throw me off, you know, eventually I'm going to start dibbling and dabbling in some of that food, um, you know, and, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna throw me off. So that, that's actually a really, I, I actually am dealing with, I have a family member now and the same thing. It's like their way of, and, and their pattern of eating is not good. And, and I think both, you know, him and his, his, his loved one are probably to blame because there's somebody's not saying, Hey, we're not going to eat this, you know, and, and, uh, it, you know, some of you it, having a support system, as you know, um, is, is very key. So, uh, yeah, it was a new mix of, 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 you know, older ones and new ones and, and just everything stepped up much better, you know, from the mental health side of things to, to the exercise, Dr. Vega, a local Costa Rican doctor was so amazing. Dr. Delfino, a local Costa Rican dentist, um, was so amazing. You know, I mean, it, it just, it, you know, we had some amazing, I, I, I you, you saw local Costa Rican dancers, you did uh, good, by the way. You danced really well. <laughs> <laughs> the young girls came down from the local, uh, from a tennis, and uh, it was it was amazing, you know? Yeah, that's so cool. Dude, I, I have to say, like, I feel like such a jerk, but, like, I'm really glad you did it that way, and you re-invited people from the first season, because my first reaction was, okay, this, this lady was on before. Yeah. Maybe she didn't learn her lesson or whatever. Why does she get to go back? down there why not invite somebody new to have the new experience and then you hear the story okay yeah. she she did the best she could she went yeah. home and did the best she could with a husband that was not necessarily supportive yeah. of that diet then yeah. he suddenly passes away yeah. and she falls off the wagon like that is so relatable any any of us would have that happen and so to include her again and to to see that support around lisa in particular i thought was really beautiful and, yeah. and to me it's also like we see numbers right the same thing happened with covid we're seeing death counts and case counts there's just these big numbers that you can't really wrap your brain around until you realize every single one of those numbers is a lisa it's yeah. somebody that has a life that has value, that has family and friends and a purpose. Yeah. And we miss that sometimes how, how real this can be for a single person versus just saying like, oh, 60, 000, or 60 million Americans are going to be type 2 diabetic or whatever. When you start to focus on those individual stories, it gets really real. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad you see that. Yeah. And, 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 and people at times like to see familiar faces. And they, they still needed help. You know, I mean, it's good to also know where they're at now. And it, and it ties in the seasons too as well. So somebody's going to want to say, Casey, well, what about what happened on season one? So a lot of times people say, all right, well, I've seen season two, but what, I want to see season one too. You know, I've seen season one, what I want to see season two. So um, it kind of really ties that in. And, uh, and who knows, maybe on season three, we'll, uh, you know, maybe we'll bring one person back um you know uh we'll, we'll see what happens you know i know i know uh, um lisa is uh you know moving and she's made some great changes and she actually does practice um carnivore uh that's the interesting thing so and who knows maybe maybe we'll have a back even if it's for a day just to 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 say some inspiring words you know Sure. No, that's great. I hope you do. Frankly, I think it's really cool to see that follow up. We all want to know, like, where are they now? Where are the, you yeah. know, the big stars in the nineties? Like, what are they doing with their life? Yeah. And, and, and you, you buy into what these people are doing. You understand how much, um, how much is up against them and how much they need to battle through. And so you start to root for them and, and you want to know how people did. So you spend the week down in Costa Rica with these people, they're fired up. They've got good education. Um, they've been eating amazing food. Marie is making all kinds of delicious food. Um, what, what have you heard about these people afterwards, after they go home back in the real world, challenging circumstances, challenging people, for the most part, were people able to stick with it from what you know? They're doing tremendous. I mean, wow. Yeah, they're doing tremendous. I mean, you know, I, I mean, it, you're going to have everyday life things. Um, but I know that Lisa came home, she lost the 70 pounds, she came off the insulin pump. Uh, 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 Janet is doing amazing. She just got married. She looks fantastic. Um, she, she looks like she's kept off the weight. 
um, yeah, Jerome too as well, kept off the weight. They all came off of medic medicine, lowered medicine. Um, yeah, they, they're doing it. They're doing really, really well. Um, but, you know, I mean, I'm sure, you know, they're, they're having days like we all do where it's like, hey, you know what, man, that, that month wasn't a good month. But, but the good thing, Casey, is that they know what it takes to get back. That's the great thing. They know what it takes to get back. They, so they, they, they have that education that when they say, I'm done and hey, listen, I screwed up the last two weeks, but now this is it. So that, that makes me feel good and, and makes me know that we did the right thing um because they know what it takes to get back yeah yeah that's great that is something that very is very unique with low carbohydrate ketogenic and carnivore diets is you lose a bunch of weight but unlike any other diet you don't gain all the weight back and then some people yeah. can get off the wagon for maybe yeah. like a few days or a week they yeah. normally feel like garbage which is really yeah. motivating to get back on you might yeah. gain a few pounds but it never seems to go back to where people were unless they absolutely go all the way back to standard america oh, totally totally yeah totally, totally. yeah, yeah it's you got to try to 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 do wrong to get back to where you were you know what i mean you have yeah. to Literally be waking up at two o'clock in the morning, running off to McDonald's for the for for, for a month. <laughs> That's right, dude. Once you're past all of that stuff, like you would <laughs> never go back to any of that. You're just right. feeling like trash, and the joints hurt, your digestive <laughs> system sucks. Exactly. Uh, well, you've already mentioned this a few times, carnivore, um, which is super interesting. I found the carnivore diet several years ago. I yeah. decided to try it for 30 days in April of 2019 and okay. enjoyed it so much that I never stopped. I've, I've been carnivore ever since, which is just over wow. three years. So wow. if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit about your experience with carnivore, how you found it, who introduced you to it, um, why you tried it, and why you want to focus this next series about it? Well, yeah, I was in, like I said, the keto space. And and and. I, I found keto and I love it, but it, it can be a little complicated. You know, I mean, it's, it's, you know, and I was just telling somebody last night, I said, man, every time I turn, I look on Instagram, there's a new keto recipe of this, that, and the other thing. It's like, dude, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I love intermittent fasting, um, but it's like, you know, they, they take this, um, uh, uh, not pastrami, what's it? Uh, the, take this one uh, uh, pepperoni, put it in this, bake it, and put this. And I'm like, dude, this is just too much, too much complication <laughs> with all. <laughs> you know, so I'm like, you know what, man, I, I was looking at the carnivore thing, but it was uh, one of the reasons why I'm excited to make this series is because even though I, I was in the keto space and, and, and knew about carnivore, I didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I didn't think that I, I'm like, this, this cannot make sense. You know, I mean, how, you know, this is, if you got high cholesterol, boy, this right here is going to put you, you know, through the roof. Um, and then, you know, like I said, this is over a year back and I started watching some videos and, and I'm like, Hmm, that, that makes sense. You know? So, yeah, I mean, you know, so, so I was watching bits and pieces here from this person, this person, and still never really got it until, you know, like I said, probably eight, nine months ago, I was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm getting this. I'm going to try this now. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, it, so one of the reasons why I want to do the series is because I, I want people to get this message in one place and not have it, you know, you grab a little from this one, a little from that one, a little from this one, and you're still really concerned. Hey, is it, well, the person, this person said, I'm not, Dr. Ken said, I'm not going to get high cholesterol or, or you're not going to, this is not, it, but is that really the truth? You know I mean? So I think that putting this series together allows us to dispel, clarify, understand from a, from a medical standpoint, um, why this really works and how it's going to work and the steps to make it work. Um, so that's really why I'm excited about this. But as far as as far as me, I mean, honestly, you know, you just said it. I mean, if people understood what it was like to not have to deal with the inflammation and the oxidative stress, all these carbs that we're consuming, you, you're right. You, you as soon as you get back to those carbs, the the, the, the joints, the muscles, the aches, the pains. The, the, you know, we don't die from diabetes. We die from that inflammation and oxidative stress. 
Um, and once you get rid of those things, so when, when we're looking at a carnivore diet and we're saying, listen, we, we don't have the sugars, we don't have the carbs, we don't have the starch. And, you know, we're, we're intermittent fasting and, you know, which is giving our body a chance to digest everything. And we're staying away from all the processed foods and things like that. How could you not, how could you not win? You know? Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree. It's funny you mentioned the recipes and that, that is one thing like watching Maria cook all those recipes. I know she's primarily carnivore anyway, also, but yeah, you realize like, wow, I was doing that. I was going to the store so many <laughs> times a week and buying all these ingredients and trying to combine right. everything. And it's like, now it's like, I, do I want burgers or chicken breasts? They're both yeah. cooked and that's a meal. Like the, that's it. I don't have to think about it any more than that. There's eggs. I've got hard boiled eggs. Easy. Like, oh my that's goodness. it. And, and our friend of mine put me on to a steamer and uh, I, I, I wasn't with, I didn't, you know, know too much about steamers like that, but, um, and throwing, throwing some, some good chicken breasts in a, in a steam. Oh my goodness, bro. This thing is mouth watering, you know? So good. <laughs> so good. Yeah, totally. And it, it's, it's interesting. Like somebody was commenting on one of my YouTube episodes that I did all about oxalates and the harms that oxalate can cause people when they build up in certain foods like chard and spinach yeah. um, and black beans and sweet potatoes and things like that. And this guy was going back and forth about how many oxalates were in like a cup of raspberries. And yeah. I said what I thought I knew. And he said, well, I've got different information here. And I was just thinking to myself, like, this is the exact reason why I choose to stay carnivore. I can just skip all of this. I don't need to worry about <laughs> oxalates or phytates or how much is in any of this. I just go right to the safest food that I know is going to make me feel super yeah. satiated. It's going to allow me to do intermittent fasting very yeah. easily without thinking about food. Why would I not just stay on this forever? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, like I said, Lisa is a perfect example. She actually started off keto. I want to say that it probably was a little complicated for her and maybe even a little expensive. Um, and she kind of just did on her own the carnivore thing. And like I said, 70 pounds in about three and a half, four months, and then came off wow. the insulin pump after 13 years. I mean, that's, wow. that's, that's unbelievable. That's, that's amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it, it works. It definitely works. That's amazing. So I'm not sure exactly what stage you are in planning your next season, but do you already know who you would like to invite as far as the experts to, to help people with carnivore? Yeah, we got everybody. You got everybody. <laughs> we got we got Maria Emmerich. We've got Ken Berry. We've got um, uh, 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 Kelly. Kelly, um, uh, you, you know Kelly. Uh, the, the big Kelly. She's one of the biggest in Hodgson. Oh, yeah. is, is, is she steak and butter girl? We have her too. We have her, oh, her too. too okay. and, nice. and we have we have steak and butter girl Bella. We have Kelly. Um, Sean Sean Baker is it Sean Baker? Great. Yeah, yeah, he actually said that he would uh, he'd be a part of it. We'd probably do more of a a, a video Skype thing with him. Um, but we have uh, we have everybody who's everybody. Doctor Tony Hampton. We have uh, love Tony. Yeah, yeah. We have. Um, Dr. Uh, Oveda, um, the, the heart specialist. We have everybody who's, we have the biggest names in the space. I don't, I don't think there's anybody bigger that we have, you know? That's, yeah, that's amazing. As, as a fellow carnivore, dude, like this, this doesn't exist. To have a TV series just about carnivore, this absolutely does not exist. I don't think season one, what you did in season one really existed in the way that you did it. And I, I would say the same thing for season two, but especially on the carnivore diet side of things, to yeah. have media as a, as a reality TV series, yeah. I think that is going to be fascinating. I think that can really show a lot of people who think this is absolutely bananas you can't eat just me to be totally healthy when you're right. actually seeing these people and seeing them go through the process and learning right. about it and seeing how it improves their lives that's gonna exactly. be powerful stuff man exactly that that's the greatest thing is that they're gonna see this real live real time seeing results but really getting that information so i remember sitting down with ken and i'm like dude i need the a to z you know what i mean i just need you to sit down and just just drop the information, you know, forget, forget, you know, any drama here or excursions there or anything like that. Let's, let's give people a class, you know, so that they understand exactly what's going on with, with, uh, you know, keto, the benefits, the health benefits, the medical side benefits, everything. Let's just, let's just go through it. So that's what we want to do. Because once again, 
people to get people really involved and bought into it, they need to say, okay, all right, all right, I, I, all right. I'm not gonna, use, I'm not gonna get high cholesterol. In fact, in fact, maybe lower it. I mean, you know, maybe I'll lower, you know, my, 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 my you know, my, my blood pressure too, and and so on and so forth. So there's there's a lot of benefits. Even last night I had a meal and it was like, you know, uh, a carnival, but it was like, you know, I didn't put any salt or anything like that on it, man. And and uh, for people who have, you know, high blood pressure, if you're not adding the salt and getting all that sodium inside you from all this processed foods and, and all this kind of stuff like that, it, it, you're going to see the benefits, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Man, it's so cool. Like, it, I really wish this would be picked up a little bit more by the mainstream to see this yeah. on, you know, Netflix and some of the major networks would be really amazing. I, don't, I just don't think we're there yet. But for you personally, how does it feel to be sharing this message with the people that are ready to find it? It, it does feel great. And, you know, Casey, the great thing about today is that there are a lot of platforms. So like, you know, getting something on Tubi, getting on something on Amazon Prime, getting something on, on Pluto, getting something on uh, uh, even Hulu, you know, is a lot easier than, than, than anything. You know, you can definitely get on all of those platforms and the show could exist there. Um, is it, it's not, you know, obviously mainstream media is not gonna, you know, put this on CBS or NBC because they get a lot of money from pharmaceutical uh, companies and advertising. Um, I even give you an example, my series that we did on cancer, it was with an amazing company out of Mexico called Hope for Cancer that does tremendous work. And uh, Discovery was supposed to air it and, uh, or a and &E, one, I think this, I think it was a and &E. And literally probably about two weeks before they were airing it. Um, and I had gone back and forth with their editing team and everything like that um, on edits on every show. And, but I think this, there was some press that came out. And I think someone in PR on their side must have seen the press. It was good press, but it it, it made them say, whoa, 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 what's this, this, you know, we it, it, maybe they, you know, they weren't paying too much of attention to us to know that it was sponsored by Hope Cancer, which is alternative treatment. Um, and literally they they reached out and said, listen, man, we we we're gonna possibly need to to cancel this this area. And I'm wow. like, serious wow and they made us jump through all kind of hoops to get them certifications and all this kind of stuff like this on, on hope for cancer and even after they got all of that they still said basically it's not going to go and it wow. was no it was no real reason why it didn't go um wow. we all know i mean you know it's owned by disney and, um, you know, Disney is getting you know, tens of millions of dollars, I'm sure, in advertising from pharmaceutical companies. So, you know, to put that up there um, would have been a game changer. So we, you know, you, there's, there's a lot you have to deal with. So, but the good thing is, is, you know, there's a lot of other networks that, that, um, that, that are out there to, to, to increase this awareness. And, 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 you know, I keep saying to myself, Casey, if I keep doing what I'm doing and doing it the right way, that we're going to strike gold soon. Somebody's, right. gonna, yeah, somebody's going to say, you know what, man, maybe, you know, maybe we, we need to put this on NBC or CBS or some other platform that, you know, millions of people can see it. Um, so, yeah, I know we, we're doing the right thing, you know? Yeah. Charles, that's amazing. I, I just, so many other people would have bailed. They would have quit. They would have stopped at some point and you are continuing to press forward, which to me just tells me what kind of person you are what kind of character and value that you have but also how passionate you are about this message this is something that can really really help a lot of people and so i really admire and respect you and your work i'm very much looking forward to season three coming out um, yeah. i will be the first one to watch it when it does and yeah. for the listener do, would you mind telling people where they can go to find you to connect with you and your work and where they can go to find the series definitely they can go to you know my website is uh, bella and ellie media b-e-l-l-a a N D E L L E media.com. That's uh, my kids' names, Bella and Ellie. And, um, you know, Charles Maddox, I'm honestly, you just Google me. I'm not hard to find, um, you know, Charles Maddox and, uh, and, and it'll, it'll take you to some websites and, and, and some stuff like that. So I, I'm not hard to find. 
Um, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, they can go to Bella and Ellie and there's links to, you know, our other Facebook pages and, um, and, and YouTube pages and things like that. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. We'll link to all of that in the notes. Is there one particular platform that you'd like to spend most of your time? To be honest, no, because I, I <laughs> while, it, while I'm being honest to you, I, man, if I didn't have to be on social media, I wouldn't, you know, agree. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I'm like, I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to get away from this stuff. So, um, you know, not really. I mean, we, we, we do a little bit of both, but you know, people could always send me emails. I get a lot of emails from people who just have seen some of the shows or, or, you know, just want to share their thoughts or want us to do something on their condition. So they could always send us an email. And, and to be honest with you, I probably answer probably 75% of them myself, you know, because I'm a big, believer in in the people and and if they're reaching out to me i'm not above talking to them and 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 trying to encourage them or whatever they need so i, I try to answer a lot myself that's amazing doesn't surprise me at all charles maddox thank you so very much for everything you're doing thank you for bringing out this content to people and thank you for taking time out of your busy life to be on our show we really appreciate you i appreciate it case thanks for having me man and, and keep doing what you're doing you know because if it wasn't for people like you, uh, we wouldn't have a voice, you know? Yeah, we all have to do our part, man. I just did Buffalo Soldiers, right? Yeah, Buffalo Soldier, <laughs> Dreadlock Rasta. Ah, uh, <laughs> man, exactly right. Now, it is such an important message, and we all need to do our part to bring it out there. And we really appreciate you bringing this message out to other people as well. So thank you again so very much, and thank you for being on our show today. I appreciate it. Bye-bye, brother. Absolutely. And this has been another episode of Balanced Body Radio.